This is Twit. All right, so this is Graph Explorer. Uh, this is a really great tool that we've built that helps people easily start to see what's in the graph and play with data and play with queries without actually writing any code. Uh, so I'm logged in here as my demo user, Ben. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a very basic query uh, to get Ben's profile. So I can see just some basic info about Ben, you know, his display name, his job title, his email address, his mobile phone number. Um, and I also, I, we have some uh, pre-canned queries over here. So we have these getting started queries so I can get his profile, I can get his photo, I can read the messages in his mailbox. Um, and quick note, you didn't see this because I had already used, I use this demo account all the time. Um, but the first time I used, I used Graph Explorer, I was asked to consent to the Graph Explorer uh, reading Ben's information and information about uh, Ben's organization. So this is not something that anybody can walk up to the graph and just start grabbing data about anybody. It's the way we, you know, we, we take the, uh, our privacy model very seriously and everything is consented. Uh, so anyways, so I can see some basic info about Ben, see his messages, see who his manager is, uh, see some documents that are trending around Ben that he might be interested in. Um, and if I want to just dig into all the different pieces of data, I can come in here and turn on these toggles. Um, so let's say I'm interested in Planner and Outlook Mail and OneDrive and OneNote. Now I have all these pre-canned queries that make it really easy for me to see what's in the graph without actually uh, writing any code. So let's dig into this a little further and I'll start to demonstrate some of the value that you get, that, that the graph provides. So here I'm just looking at Ben's basic profile and uh, this information all comes from Azure Active Directory. But because the, due to the nature of the graph, I can see more. So let's go ahead and you can see I'm just using a standard OData select query. And I'm going to get his mail, display name, and his office location, and that's again all from uh, Azure AD. But now let's say let's get some data. Let's mix in some SharePoint skills, his my site information, and his mailbox settings from Exchange. And now you can see this all comes back in one easy query. So previously, this call I just made. You would have had to call three separate APIs, three separate tokens, and you know integrate three times. And now we've taken that down to a single point of integration. Um, I can also start to get some more interesting information if I hop into the beta endpoint, uh, which is so V1. If an API is in V1, it means it's ready for use in production applications. If it's in beta, it's something that we've put out there. We want to get feedback on. Uh, there may be breaking changes, um, and this is where we, you know, basically put our new stuff um, that we're ready to expose to the public, but not ready uh, to take to prime time. Um, so I'm also going to add on. identity user risk. And now I can see whether there's been any risky activity pertaining to Ben's account. And I can see, oops, I scrolled right by it. So I can see that I had a medium level risk event uh, back in March, and then I had a low level risk event back in May. So I can get all mix all these these different pieces of data together that previously were locked up uh, in, in different silos of the cloud. Um, I can also do interesting navigations. So I can jump into Ben's OneDrive and I can look at all the files and I can find a file that's interesting to me. Uh, let's pick one here. This Trey Research Sales Info PowerPoint. I can grab this file. And then I can query on the file. And then I can seamlessly jump to the user profile. Oops. <laughs> Live demos, right? Right.
Uh, let's see. I also have this handy history here, and I ran this before. Let's see. That's cool. Yeah, so that... Uh, so this is actually really handy. Uh, I'll go back to that for a second so you can see. Um, if you're playing around in here and you eventually find the perfect query for what you're doing, and you know you don't have to worry about uh, copying and pasting it somewhere before you move on and try some other stuff, you can always come back to this history and see all your queries that you ran previously. So, okay, so this worked. I don't know what I was doing wrong there. Um, so what's hey, it, Jeff, what I did here? This yeah, is Brian. Um, I'd like to call out a question from the chat room. They're yeah. asking, um, what about non-Microsoft? Can we start playing with um, pulling in development tools from, say, like s different flavors of SQL, uh, Hadoop, um, other language, other toolkits um, or tools like PHP, Python, and so forth? Uh, where are you guys on integrating third-party tools? So as far as – it's kind of – I'll address that in two parts. So – you can use the, the graph, the API itself. So it's just a REST API. So any uh, platform you use that talks REST, as far as what you're developing in, can talk to the graph. We're completely uh, platform language agnostic. As far as pulling in data from other sources, um, we don't have today the ability to hook up graph like and to extend graph uh, with a SQL database or Hadoop cluster, for example. However, we do have uh, extensions in the graph. We have an extensibility model where you can add your own data to the graph on an um, instance by instance basis. So you couldn't like do something where you had like slash SQL table and you know have the entire you know your entire SQL database replicated in the graph. But what you could do, and I'll show you. Um, is if you want to hop back to the demo. Let me, I'm going to show some extensibility samples here. What you could do is add some custom data to the graph. So let's say you have an app that uh, wants to roam uh, users. Um, UI preferences. So if they like the dark theme and they prefer the color purple or green and they prefer their uh, and they speak Japanese, um, you want to persist this across an app that's built on the graph um, without having to ask the user every time or, or store data locally. You can actually um, add this, so I'm going to post this to the graph. What this is going to do is create an extension, uh, it's a scheme extension on the user object, and it's actually going to go ahead and it's going to go ahead and um, extend Ben's user profile with that information I just uh, added. So now I can read Ben's profile back, and now when I read his profile, in addition to all that information I had before, I have his roaming settings. So. Big answer. Hopefully that covered what the uh, what you were wanting to know. So I, I did have a quite another question from there's a yeah. specs in the in the chat room and in, and they're actually asking you know what you know what's the barrier of entry here? Obviously the Graph Explorer seems cool. You have to mm -hmm. you sign into your account. What's you know what's the next barrier? Is it, is it somebody who can play with it without an account? Can they you know how do they kind of how do they integrate it with Visual Studio? What's what's kind of the story there? That's a good question. So, yeah, we, we have some uh, experiences in Visual Studio that make it really easy to get up and running. Um, so, you know, we have some pre-built connections there. Um, we also have all sorts of samples and SDKs that you can find right on our documentation page, um, right, right at the top on graph.microsoft.com. Um, and, yeah, you can, if you click on uh, samples and SDKs, right to the right. Yeah, so we have all these. Um, in order to build, so that's part of it is getting you know set up, uh, and also you can just use REST if that's your uh, you know if, if 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 that's your flavor. But um, 
you also, so basically, yeah, you, you need some sort of Microsoft account, whether that's a commercial or a consumer account, but you can sign up for free. Um, you know, Graph is totally free to use, free to develop against. Um, there, yeah, there's no paywall or anything like that. And you just need to register your app um, with our identity platform um, or and then you're good to go. 